year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of the nurse in preparation for your GCSE English Literature exam. First of all then, the nurse acts as a comic relief during the play as she is of a lower class and quite rude. She has raised Juliet from birth. She is fondly attached to Juliet and becomes her confidant. She is loyal to Juliet even when she knows it defies the wishes of the family. She does, however, betray Juliet. Her function is almost as a catalyst as she helps Romeo and Juliet get married and this moves the action of the play forward quickly. She acts as the go-between helping the relationship progress. Introduction then. Her introduction is in Act 1, Scene 3. She mentions Juliet's age and reminds the audience that she is not yet 14 years old. She is a direct contrast to Lady Macbeth because she cares for Juliet's well-being. She is always by Juliet's side. Her speech is a direct contrast to Lady Capula as well because she's very physical when talking about relationships. For instance, thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit, and this refers to sex. So straight away, even though she's talking about Juliet being very young and very innocent, she, she mentions sex. And remember, women at the time the play was written were prepared for married and domestic life, so she kind of mentions sex because I suppose in some ways Juliet needs to be prepared for that because Lady Capulet and Lord Capulet want her to marry Paris. But this is the first instance of the nurse being quite rude. Your quotation there. No less near bigger women grow by men, meaning lose nothing. In fact, you'd get bigger. Men make women bigger by getting pregnant. So straight away, her introduction, she talks about falling backward and having sex with men. And then she talks about, again, very jokey because she is, as I say, the comic relief in this play. She is the, a part of the humour factor other than Mercutio. She talks about how women get bigger because they're going to get pregnant. She acts as a mother figure to Juliet and she has lost her own daughter, Susan. And therefore, she feels that Juliet is the closest thing to her own child. And she says in the beginning, I know her age down to the hour. And that, I suppose that line there, yes, it reiterates Juliet's age and innocence, but it does emphasise the fact that she knows Juliet very, very well better than her own mother, Lady Capulet. And as I said on the last, side, last slide, she believes more in the physical side of love, and this is shown throughout the play. She contrasts uh, greatly with Juliet's views on love, because Juliet's very sp uh, spiritual in her views of love and mental and... Uh, her mental views of love, sorry, are very romanticised, aren't they? Whereas the nurse is is crude and she does keep mentioning sex and um, here's another example, go girl, seek happy nights to happy days. Uh, as in, if you go and look for a man, he'll, he'll end your night in a happy way. In Act 2, Scene 4 then, um, obviously Romeo and Juliet have met each other, confessed their love and Juliet sends the nurse to meet with Romeo and find out the plans for the wedding. When the nurse tries to find Romeo, though, she meets Mercutio and Mercutio flirts with her and mocks her. She is insulted, but actually she also enjoys the sexual innuendo that Mercutio uses. When she finally gets Romeo alone, the nurse talks very quickly and barely allows Romeo to speak. She often rambles on, and we know that from the very beginning. She expresses concerns that Romeo might lead her into a fool's paradise and tries to ensure that he's not tricking her if you should deal double with her. So we've got two instances there that show the nurse's protective side. So she, as I say, she questions Romeo, are you leading her into a fool's paradise? Um, are you dealing with her double, if you like? Are, are you telling the truth? Can you be trusted? So we do have the protective nature of the nurse here that she's looking out for Juliet's best interests. And don't forget, in, in this time, it was illegal 
for a girl of, of Juliet's age to get married without her parents' consent. So the nurse here is double checking that she approves of Romeo. You've got a quotation at the bo bo bottom there. Good heart and in faith I will tell her as much, Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. So she does eventually agree that Romeo has a good heart and that Juliet will be happy. So she's going to go and tell her. Bear in mind, though, that the nurse will ultimately betray Juliet in this play. Uh, big quotation here. You've got Shakespeare on the left, translation on the right. Obviously, I don't expect you to remember this, but... The nurse says to Romeo, well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady, Lord, Lord. When t'was a little prating thing, oh, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay a knife aboard, but she, good soul... Had has leaf say a toad, a very toad to see him. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I'll warrant you when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. Doth not Ro Rosemary and Romeo begin both with a letter? And your translation's very clear there. She says, well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady, Lord, Lord. When she was a little baby, again, shows you the bond between the two. Oh, there is one nobleman in the city, a guy named Paris, who would be happy to claim her as his own. Juliet would rather look at a toad than at him. I make her angry sometimes by seeing that Paris is more handsome than you are. But when I say so, I swear she turns white as a sheet. Don't Rosemary, Rosemary was a token of remembrance between lovers and for the dead. Rosemary and Romeo begin with the same letter. So she praises Juliet as the sweetest lady. She mentions the fact that she's known her since she was a baby. And then she actually almost teases Romeo with this idea that actually Paris wants to marry her as well. Act 2, Sing 5. Her body references to the sexual aspect of love contrast with the idealistic love of Romeo and Juliet as described by themselves. Remember when they first meet, we get this, this lovely metaphorical religious imagery of sinner, sinners and pilgrims. The nurse isn't like that at all. She doesn't share Juliet's idea of love. Love to the nurse is physical, as I said at the beginning. When the nurse brings Juliet news of Romeo's wedding arrangement, she focuses on the wedding night. Quote, I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. But this is perhaps a forewarning that later in the play she will encourage Juliet to forget Romeo because remember, as we've just said, she sees love as physical. So that would mean in the nurse's eyes, Juliet can go from Romeo to Paris. Clearly, obviously, Juliet does not think that. She adds comedy and tension here as she keeps Juliet waiting before revealing Romeo's response. So Juliet is desperate to hear what Romeo has said to the nurse. And the, uh, the nurse adds comic effect here and builds up the tension because she doesn't reveal it straight away. In fact, she takes a while. What he is, can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? Eventually, obviously, she does reveal the good news that uh, Juliet should get ready and go to the friar because she's about to be married. But interestingly, the nurse suggests that Romeo is a foolish choice of man. And again, there's that ultimate uh, foreshadowing that Shakespeare uses. And it does reiterate the prologue, star-crossed lovers, that fate has decided that they're going to die. Well, you have made a simple choice. Your translation there, you have made a foolish choice. You don't know how to pick a man, Romeo, with a question mark. In the, in the sense that you know not how to choose a man, Romeo, as if to say your choice is foolish. But then again, she goes back to the nurse we know, which is the physical description. That he's pretty, that, um, that he's handsome, that he's got nice legs and nice hands and nice feet. But remember here, she begins by suggesting that Romeo is a foolish choice. Okay? And remember, she is... The person that takes care of Juliet, she is the confidant. She is the person that Juliet tells, I'm going, I love Romeo, the worst enemy. And the catalyst, again, big speech. You don't need to remember it all, obviously, but it's just to show you. So as I said at the beginning, she is arguably the catalyst as well as the friar because the nurse and the friar know about the marriage, know about the relationship. And they help Romeo and Juliet keep it a secret, which does progress the action. 
So when she says, hence to fry a Loris's cell, they stay as a husband to make you a wife, she has gone about send, going to see Romeo and helping arrange this secret marriage. Interestingly as well here, she says, I must another way to fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I'm going to come to that later. But again, it's this idea that she's going to help them have sex with each other um, by getting a rope ladder that Romeo can climb to get into Juliet's bedroom and obviously have sex with her in that bit where it says you will use it to climb up to your window while it's dark um, in that bit and must climb a bird's nest. Act three, scene two. So as we know, the nurse is going to get some sort of rope ladder to allow Romeo to sneak into Juliet's room. But she has also seen Tybalt's dead body and heard that it was Romeo who killed him. The nurse tells Juliet the terrible news and bitterly denounces Romeo. Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. Your translation is again on the right. Romeo was hateful even though God isn't. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it would be Romeo. When she sees how desperate Juliet feels at the news of Romeo's banishment, though, the nurse promises to find him. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. So again, she's playing this part, this part that helps their relationship, um, well, succeed at the moment, helps them see each other. And she says, Tybalt is gone and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. So she's, she realises that when she's, when Juliet's upset that she could possibly help. So she's going to go and get Romeo. So again, the nurse here, it's the caring side of the nurse. We've seen the protective side. Um, we we see that she's trying to act on, on behalf of Juliet and Juliet's wishes. So here now she says, I'll find Romeo to comfort you. So she's going to go and help Romeo see Juliet. She does, though, uh, denounce all men, actually. Um, and she says there's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all naught, all dissemblers. Your translation there. There is no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. Men, all of them lie and all of them cheat. They're all wicked. And then again, she brings up Romeo here. Shame on Romeo. So think about that. This is the woman who is helping Juliet see this man when we get to act three scene three uh, Romeo is hiding in Friar Lawrence's cell and the nurse tells him to get his act together because he needs to go and see Juliet and um, then she lets Romeo know that Juliet still loves him even though he's killed Tybalt and she brings the ring here sir a ring she bid me give you sir you make here's for it goes very late so again she is the go-between she takes this ring to, to Romeo to show that Juliet still loves him. And then we come to the moment of betrayal. Okay, so after Romeo and Juliet have spent their wedding night together in secret, the nurse comes in to warn them that Juliet's mother's coming. Lady Capula announces that Juliet will be marrying Paris later that week. When Juliet hysterically refuses to marry Paris, her father is furious and the nurse tries to intervene and protect Juliet. Quote, God in heaven bless her, you are to blame my lord to rate her so. Translation, God in heaven bless her, my lord you're wrong to berate her like that. So again we've got the protective side, the mother instinct that Lady Capulet doesn't show is in the pres is present in the nurse here because she tries to protect Juliet from her father shouting at her and berating her and verbally attacking her but actually what happens then is Lord Capula turns this verbal attack on the nurse and perhaps even physically hits her that is a uh, perhaps though may may not one speak and his re response is peace you mumbling fool so he attacks the nurse who has protected Juliet he tells Julia that she can either marry Paris or be thrown onto the streets. After her parents leave, Julia, Juliet asks the nurse for advice. The nurse tells her she should forget Romeo and marry Paris. And this is your speech. Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished and all the world to nothing. That he dares never come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it, it needs must be... By stealth. Then since the case so stands as now it doth, I think at best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. 
Romeo's a dish cloud to him, an eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. Be true, my very heart. I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead, or twere as good he were, as living here, and you no use of him. Again, translations there. This is what I have to say. Romeo has been banished and it's a sure thing that he will never come back to challenge you. If he does come back, he'll have to sneak back undercover. Since things are the way they are, I think the best thing to do is to marry the Count. He's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dishcloth compared to him. Madam, an eagle does not have eyes as green, as quick and as fair as the eyes of Paris. Curse my very heart, but I think you should be happy in this second marriage because it's better than your first. Even if it's not better, your first marriage is over. Or if Romeo is as good as Paris, Romeo doesn't live here, so you don't get to enjoy him. I've put in red the bit you probably can remember for a quotation. I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Now, if you look closely at how she describes Paris... It is um, pretty much the same way she described Romeo. So when she approved that Romeo was a good man, she said that. And she described him as being pretty and having lovely hands and feet, as we discussed earlier. And now she's gone uh, full 360, hasn't she? And she said, oh, actually, Paris is lovely. He's, he's quick and he's fair and there's no man like him. So the nurse has, has changed her opinion here. And she encourages Juliet to marry Paris. And we've got to be asking ourselves, why does she do this? Now, there's a number of possible interpretations. The first being, the nurse doesn't understand that Juliet's love for Romeo is real. So as we discussed earlier, all this references to sex and physical relationships. The nurse thinks that uh, love can be physical, so Juliet will be able to move on. Perhaps she believes that Juliet isn't in love because of her age. There's also the selfish possibility that the nurse doesn't want to lose Juliet to Romeo. Okay. And the nurse doesn't understand Juliet's love for Romeo, but knows that Juliet will have to follow her father's wishes. It was illegal to marry without parental consent in those days. So is it actually that the nurse is looking after Juliet here and saying, Do you know what, you're going to have to marry Paris because... That is what your father has decided. And as a woman in Elizabethan society, you belong to your father. So you, again, you need to consider why does she betray Juliet here? Is it, is it care? Is it selfishness? Or is it a lack of understanding that she doesn't really understand that actually Juliet loves Romeo? And remember, she loves him so much that she will kill herself at the end of the play. Um... Act 4, scene 5 then, um, when she goes into Juliet's chamber on the morning of the wedding, she realises that she's dead. The county Paris has set up his rest that you shall rest but little. God forgive me. Again, she's coming into Juliet's chamber talking about sex. You know, Paris isn't going to let you rest tonight. You're going to um, consummate your wedding physically. And then she realises... Oh, my lady's dead, and she shouts it out. Now, on the right-hand side there, I've written Friar Lawrence's words at the end of the play. When he explains what has happened, he does mention, well, the nurse knew about it as well. So again, you've got to be asking yourself how far responsible you feel the nurse is for their deaths and for the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. Interestingly and fittingly, it is the nurse that finds Juliet dead. Um, in terms of language, we know we always have to mention Shakespeare's language. Shakespeare matches the language to the character that uses it. And for the nurse, this is blank verse. OK, um, blank verse matches colloquial English, colloquial speech. And, and colloquial English is slang, isn't it, really? And that emphasises her class and it fits her comic role. So the fact that she speaks in this colloquial language and is constantly talking about sex adds to her humour. She is implied to be ugly by Mercutio, who urges the nurse's servant Peter to fetch her fan quickly to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. So we've got the suggestion that she's ugly and old. Mercutio calls her an ancient lady. Now, the nurse uses um, malapropisms, I can never pronounce that word, I do apologise, malapropisms, and that is the use of an incorrect word 
in place of a word with a similar sound, resulting in a nonsensical, uh, often humorous uh, statement. So if you can remember that in your exam, that would be good. So look again. Malapropisms. If you can spell it, that's brilliant as well. So again, it's the incorrect use of a word. Again, shows us her class. And again, this adds to her crude nature when she is referring to physical relationships and, and things like that. So if, you, if you're aiming for your grade 7, 8 and 9, we do need blank verse, colloquial speech and malapropisms. I do apologise if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Now, I'm going to uh, finish now with the nurse's name because it's quite interesting. The nurse's given name could possibly be Angelica because Lord Capulet um, says to her, refers to her as good Angelica. Now, if we look at Angelica, apologies, I'll go back to Catalyst. Um, the name Angelica is a Latin baby name and in the Latin meaning of the name, it is angel. Or if you want the Greek version of it, it is messenger. Now, this is massively important in both instances. If we take the Latin word, the Latin way, which is angel, we have this um, idea that she's angelic um, because she has helped Juliet fulfil this love that she has for Romeo and marry him um, and spend time with him and, and have sex with him. If we look at messenger again, it, it totally fits her character because She goes to Romeo to make sure his intentions are noble and that he truly loves Juliet. She tells him that if he's planning on breaking her heart, he should give up now. When she decides that he's good enough for Juliet, she arranges the marriage. She makes sure that they spend their first night together because she goes to Friar Lawrence's cell to get him. The nurse is the go-between and this name of messenger totally fits, doesn't it? So consider that in your exam. And to prove that she wants them to spend the night together, it's that quotation I read earlier. She says, I'll go and get a ladder so that he can come to you and spend the night with you. Okay? So she is the catalyst because she does all of those things. If she, if she didn't, potentially there, there, there wouldn't be a relationship, which is why she's the catalyst. She helps speed up Romeo and Juliet's relationship from marriage to sex. And, and then unfortunately, obviously, they, di they die after that. But she is a, she is one of the reasons as well, though, isn't she? Because when Juliet goes to her at her most vulnerable, at her most desperate and asks for advice, the nurse betrays her by suggesting she marry Paris. I hope this video has been useful. Please check out my other videos. Just type Stacey Ray into YouTube. S-T-A-C-E-Y and Ray is R-E-A-Y and a massive good luck in your English literature exam.